Joe and Kamala, bless their hearts. They couldn't help themselves. They hired 85,000 new IRS agents to harass hardworking Americans. Who is going to look at those 85,000 IRS agents and say, you're fired, <laughs> Donald Trump? Their regulations aren't just burdensome. Often, they include racist DEI requirements. Many small businesses are going bankrupt. Some are throwing up their hands in disgust. Our party's platform pledges seven times to cut regulations that are killing jobs and costing you thousands of dollars. Now, you know who will slash that red trait and return this country to economic greatness? Donald Trump. If you're lucky enough to have no idea who this is, meet Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn, one of Donald Trump's key allies in the Senate who will do and who will say anything to push his MAGA agenda to the masses. Right now, it appears that it is very intentional for this administration to ignore the border, to leave it wide open, to let people come in. Every town in this country is a border town. Mm -hmm. Every state yep. is a border state. Because of all the drugs, the trafficking, the gangs, the uptick in crime, and it is all related. They have prioritized that by giving them benefits, by making it easy, and making certain that they placed this, an open border, at the top of their to-do list. Nothing but lies, bigotry, otherizing, and fear-mongering. But what else do you expect from Fox News? Despite Kamala Harris and the Democrats adopting and campaigning on a strikingly right-wing immigration policy platform, that still isn't enough for Blackburn and her fellow Republicans. They are pushing for extreme measures, roundups of suspected immigrants, concentration camps, and mass deportations. And they think they own political rhetoric, as shown when Joe Biden made this true statement. For Puerto Rico, where I'm in my home state of Delaware, they're good, decent, honorable people. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. His, his, his demonization is seen as unconscionable and it's un-American. Blackburn and her fellow Republican snowflakes absolutely lost their minds. They are not garbage. Trump supporters are not garbage. And that kind of language is over the top and completely uncalled for. And what they're trying to do is play the fear card and make people very fearful of Republicans and Republican policies. You see some of the videos from Trump boat parades or parades in communities, and it is people that are having a great time celebrating the goodness and the greatness of this country. Has she been seeing some of the same boat parades that we have? Yeah. Jupiter ride, Trump's theme boat parade, man. There we go. Let's see it. My pillow, 1488. More. Look at those beautiful swastikas. We gotta make America white again. Yeah, hell, Trump. White power. White power. You now, Blackburn's pearl clutching is strategic, of course, designed to deflect from her party's destructive policies. It is shameless how she and her Republican colleagues use manufactured outrage to shift the narrative and divert attention. Why do they do this? Well, it's simple. Their policies hurt their own constituents and they have to appease their deep-pocketed donors. Staying on message is crucial because they rely on these stunts to maintain power. Plus, their rhetoric often goes so far off the rails that even a factual statement from Democrats is treated as an unforgivable offense. And it's not her, it's the people that surround her. They're scum, they're scum. And they want to take down our country. They are absolute garbage. Madison Square Garden was rocking and rolling with Trump supporters last night. And it was great to see so many people come out and stand for getting this nation back on track addressing inflation in the economy, securing the border, making certain our allies know they're our ally and our enemies fear us 
and making certain we protect girls and women in sports. As you probably expected, Blackburn had nothing to say about Trump levying the exact same criticism against Democrats. Hmm. Nor did she condemn the hate rally that took place at Madison Square Garden. The hypocrisy is staggering. But the shamelessness in thinking that people wouldn't pick up on it, that's even worse. Blackburn, like many Republicans, has little respect for her base, treating them as mere tools to further her own career. The common theme here? Well, Republicans thrive on feeling victimized, whether it's their voters or their elected officials. And that brings us to this. It's going to be huge because this is not some comedian saying something stupid and offensive at a rally where he should have been just, just basically disinvited. This is the president of the United States endorsing his vice president saying something. And I know that there's different interpretations about what he said. It's still inappropriate. You still shouldn't be doing it. This may be a turning point for those final 3%, and that's all it is, who still need to be persuaded. Racism is not a, a name or an insult. It is a descriptor of a belief system. It's a descriptor of a belief system. And Donald Trump believes that Americans are not created equal. He believes, and the people that he puts in power, like Stephen Miller, believes, they believe that U.S. citizens are not created equal. So when they go on a stage and echo the words of Adolf Hitler, this is real life. This is real life. When he goes up on a stage and the people that he wants to appoint as leadership heads in administration and they echo the words of Adolf Hitler in America for Americans. No, he's not talking about U.S. citizens. He's talking about who he believes is loyal enough to Donald Trump. And that's who he con considers an American. On Biden's response to the rally joke, here's my take. It was a bold move that spoke directly to the absurdity of the moment. It shows he's not backing down from calling out bigotry, which resonates with progressives and younger voters who want to see strong, unapologetic leadership. However, I can certainly see why some might view it as risky. It is fodder for Republicans to twist into a gotcha moment against the Harris campaign. As for AOC's speech, it was powerful, cutting through the noise and calling out the false equivalency Republicans love to play up. This entire situation is an example of their expertise in creating false narratives. They cry foul when faced with facts, but refuse accountability when their own go too far. It's a tired game, but once they're committed to it, they have to stay with the strategy, the only strategy they have left.